everyone. So we just recently finished our hardwood floor install on the uh, garage part, garage part of our toy hauler. One of the things some people probably is going to make people not want to do this is if they do actually haul toys. Well, in our case, we have a Harley, and so we ordered a new mounting system because. Uh, having to lug out and pull out straps all the time is kind of frustrating at times and well honestly we wanted the floor so we came we did some research and found lots of people talking about this uh system called the biker bar and uh, i'll include a link in the description but today we're, that's our goal is to install this biker bar and figure out a way to where it does not damage our floor but we can still pull it up and obviously got to be able to tow the harley so that's our uh, adventure today. So we're gonna start with uh, unboxing the biker bar. I know I need to go to Home Depot to get a couple of things. And then uh, we're gonna pack up the house because uh, the, currently the spot we're at is sort of unlevel like this. And so what happens is it, we can't, our ramp is literally like this if we were to set it down on the ground right now. So we're gonna tow to a local school and install this, get the bike up in and uh, in place and then yeah, we're going to record this whole process because the challenge for us is figuring out where we want it mounted and making sure we don't have to take up the flooring that we just uh, spent hours laying down to replace boards because we oopsed. So uh, I'm going to grab the biker bar stuff, reset up the camera, and we're going to go through a quick unboxing. Okay, so... Uh, this is the biker bar. They are motorcycle specific uh, to an extent when you go online if you if you want to research this. Um, there's not a lot of videos other than just people driving up and they lock into place. But just ordered this. First off, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this box is heavy. <laughs> um, it is not a light adventure, but we're going to start with just a quick opening. So one of the things the uh, the box does have says facebook.com slash ditch the straps. Um, it's the BMW uh, biker bar, but you can also go on there. There's lots of people that have, uh, have already installed this and have said nothing but good things about them. Okay, so what the biker bar is, from what I've been able to learn, is these plates will actually go underneath the flooring. So like if this was one side and this was another side, we'd want them facing out like that. And then what will end up happening is this whole system here ends up being, this will sit on top of the flooring. This is underneath your flooring, like underneath your camper. Then you drop the bolt down in, tighten the bolt until the lock washer flattens, of course, and it's secured in place. And then we'll talk about what we got to do with the actual motorcycle part. But I do need this. I'm going to take this with me just to make sure I get the right size screws that I need for uh, securing this to the underside. So it does come with biker bar instructions which these are also online. Um, these are exactly what's online. But, so we'll talk through what is the biker bar. All right, so basically what happens is, is if this is bolted onto the floor, once again, uh, these will be bolted under like that. So it gets a nice good grip. But this was, so there's a floor in between, threw the bolt in, this is on the top of the floor. This gets bolted to the frame of your bike. This is adjustable. It will come out. Once you loosen this, the frame adjusts in and out. And then what's what happens is, as you drive up, I don't know how well this will work, it's going to compress and just locks in. 
and basically you walk away and you're done. So first stop for me, going to Lowe's, gonna get some wood screws that will fit in here to hold this. Cause this doesn't, and these don't have to be load bearing necessarily. They just gotta hold the plate up. And then I'm also going to get some rubber matting to put down underneath this. Something that will compress down so that we don't lose the integrity of this actually holding the motorcycle while traveling, but will also prevent the metal bottom from scraping the floor. And so, yeah, that's where I'm headed now. You ever have those days when uh, you keep going back to the hardware store because you need one thing and you had like a list in your head and didn't write down everything or you didn't consider the fact that you didn't have a certain tool like a drill bit? That's been my morning, but now hopefully we should have everything and um, we're going to pull our camper out of our spot and then going to uh, basically drive the motorcycle up, get things tentatively set in place and then mark it, you know, mark where we got to drill the holes. Put, you know, get the motorcycle out of the way temporarily just inside the garage and drill this bad boy and test this thing out. Oh, it's been frustrating. So the next thing, we uh, pull our rig out because of the ramp difference, got it in here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bolt on this. Um, some notes about this, padded neoprene so that it doesn't damage the frame of your bike. And what we're going to do so mount this to the frame. Take it to where it's tight or until we flatten this washer down. You can see the washer. Once the washer's flat, we're going to take it another quarter turn. And now we have to decide where we want to place this, uh, place the base. And so for us, there is a gap underneath. We'll go underneath here in a sec to show you of where we're going to put that on top of this so that we can drill down through and not have to do too much cutting. But so yeah, that's what we're going to do now. So for us, we know that we want our our bike to be roughly where it is, maybe forward a little bit so that the tire locks in place a little bit forward. Um, and so we will have to move the bike out of the way for this, but we're gonna basically put it sort of where we want in place and then we'll go underneath to check and make sure. But the gap should be right around there. And so the next step is to go underneath and just do a quick uh, quick sanity check all right so we're under our rig here's our two fuel tanks where the underpinning starts and our goal is there's a gap that is just wide enough for what we need and our goal is to get the, the motorcycle um, dr the holes drilled in that space up there and so I guess that leads us to our first challenge is we got to figure out how we're going to do this. How we're going to measure to make sure we get what we need. Get to the exact point. I'll let you know what we do. Okay, so there's, the only way that we can see that we can record, uh, measure to get to here, this is just me eyeballing, putting some blue tape down. But we're going to measure from the on the underside of the frame to that center point, even if we're off by just like a half an inch it won't matter because we have enough room so we're going to measure from the frame to the gap underneath 
and then we'll come up top. Amanda will hold the tape measure where the frame is, and we'll measure again just to make sure we're doing it right. Okay, so now we have a tentative location. I'm gonna stand the bike straight up and I'm gonna have Amanda put a piece of tape at the end of the biker bars so that we know where our center point is. So we know that we need to get the, the system inside of that. And so uh, we're gonna do that real quick. Okay, so as you can see, the bike's in all cattywampus. And <laughs> now what we did is when we put the, the Harley straight up, we taped, we measured 88 inches and then we taped where we think it's gonna go. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna make sure that we're centered. And then the next step is we're gonna we're gonna mark the holes. All right. So I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in. Put a little hole where the center, just a little dimple. Did the same thing over on that side. It doesn't look like it's in the center, but trust me, it is. It's just the matting I have underneath. And so the next step is we can move this and do our initial drill of the initial holes. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a step bit. Let's take us down to the 5 8 inch thickness. What I like to do whenever I use my step bit is just tape where my 5 8 inch and here comes Amanda's stress level. And to make sure that we are properly wide enough we're going to do a quick check. We are. And we're just going to double check that our hole is in the center like we want it. And it looks good to me. And so some of you guys may be wondering why I'm using a step bit. It's because they were all out of 5 8 inch drill bits at every store that I went to today. So I'm using the step bit so I get a nice clean hole in the top for when I put a grommet in. And then I'm gonna use a uh, paddle bit to get me the rest of the way through. Again, gonna do just a quick check, fits and Switch over to the Speed Demon.
I think it went through. <laughs> yep. And now we're just do one last check, make sure our bolts just drop right in. Or they'll screw in at least. Okay, step one. That's good. That one is good. Okay, so now we got our holes drilled. We gotta go underneath and we gotta find them. So I know that from the wall, I probably wanna make a cut at 14 and a half inches just to sort of see what I can find to maybe 19 inches so that I can peel back. And I may actually have to do more than that. I may do like 13 to 20 or just cut this whole section out so I can just do one piece of tape job. So actually I'm gonna do that. So from 13 to 42 and five inches wide. Let's go see what we can find. We're gonna shove these bolts down. See what we can find on them. See if we can find them down there. And hope that we don't have to lower the tank, the, the gas tank. Cause Okay, so found them underneath. The measuring technique actually worked. Um, it worked really well going from the back of the frame. So if you're doing this on your own, I would suggest I would suggest that you do the same or have some come up with your own method. But we measured exactly from the back. We are smack dab in the middle. I'll show you guys when we go underneath here in a sec. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in place and see if these bolts are long enough. And so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna put this in place, put the bolts through. Amanda will stay up here and we'll thread the bolts as I hold the plates on. We're gonna use these to hold the plates on underneath and then I'll go back in with the with my little screws that I need to do to put this in place. So one thing you don't want to mess up, make sure open ends to the back for what you got for what you gotta be doing. Okay, so I'm going to go underneath and Amanda has the <laughs> drill set up to tighten for us. And it's a 15 16 uh, bolt. That's the head size. So I'm gonna go underneath, I'm gonna put the nut in place and then she's gonna very slowly tighten it down and then we can screw it in place underneath. I'll take you guys under to show you what we're doing. Okay, we are underneath. I made a, my initial cut, found where the bolt was, cut it, peeled back, you can see. We were just freaking perfect, which is amazing. All I did with this insulation is I pushed it back and I'll peel it, I'll, I'll pull it back up make sure it's covered when we're done but, and then over here oh so I didn't finish cutting that one but you can see the bolt head is right up there and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this one and uh, so yeah let me grab a plate and we'll get started For all the ladies out there wondering if I'm feeling upset if we messed up the floor, I really don't. Um, I'm excited to see what we figure out for whatever rubber caps will fit in the hole because this whole thing will come out unless we're actually hauling the motorcycle. So I'll just have the floor in a little probably darker, maybe like a black or brown rubber cap that fits in there. And if anything, I can always put a rug over it if I don't like how the cap looks. So I'm not upset upset at all how it looks I think it's I think it's still a beautiful floor and it doesn't take away from the living space at all so okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this plate in and the way we want it to sit is right like that so it has the maximum amount of surface area grabbing and then now I'm gonna yell for Amanda to screw it in go ahead
so I can hear and kind of feel him, what it feels like putting the plate underneath where the bolt is going to attach. So, so here I go. I heard him say, hold on, so I'm pausing. So apparently the grand design floors are deeper, deeper than we thought. So we got to go get some new bolts. I can't even make this up. <laughs> Went to Home Depot. They were out of stock. Sorry. On to the next place. So this is the original one that it came with. Jeff went ahead and got these ones to see if this would actually work since these were just too short. Luckily though, he was smart enough to go buy that in-between size and this is the one that we are currently using. Okay, so one trip, well, one more trip to the hardware store and we now have the depth that we need. We got this one, this one tightened in. And so we're gonna move over here. Is that good? Uh, nope, not yet. Okay, so the last step is we're going to put in these screws to hold these bolts in place. And all that does is it makes it to where we can take the, uh, the big bolts, the grade 8 bolts, out on the top, move it out of the way, and we don't ever have to come underneath here again. So that is what we're doing now. These are And the test for this is that Amanda is going to take the drill or the uh, impact and unbolt them real quick and let's see if they fall. All right, we're gonna... These aren't moving. We are good to go. We're going to seal this bottom stuff back up and get going. You can see we're not totally in. Just do a quick shift. One of the beautiful things about it is there's no straps. Bike's not going anywhere. I think we're gonna have to move the back just a little bit more because you can see I can't really push the foot pegs to release it just there so we'll have to adjust it again but that is easy because all I got to do is take off the bar that is attached here our plate is perfectly fine where it is though so just some tinkering with this to see how it will fit perfectly but other than that we are set up for success Okay, so after some adjustments, we ended up moving it further back because my bike does have the large foot pedals, but and as you can see, we're pretty much locked in place. To give you an idea, I'll just sort of stand up, walk away from the bike. Now I am a little bit off center. We don't want quite as much bar sticking out because on the other side, there's not as much. But that's something we can adjust when we come back in the next time. I think it looks, looks pretty good. I like it. I like the uh, how clean it is. I feel like... Even if we're going on some bumps, I feel like I trust it. And there we go.
That doesn't move. Hey, we're shaking the whole house. All right, let's get this bike out of here and get our house back to normal. <laughs> 